The swagger oozing out in this 1970s era pick is pure nostalgia. Let's explore 25 retro outfits that faded into history. Number 25, bell bottoms. Bell bottoms, the iconic pants that associated with hippies and counterculture in the 1970s, became a must have for every fashion conscious person in the world. Originating from the Navy and adopted by the hipsters and anti war protesters who adorned them with embroidery, flowers, and colorful patches, bell bottoms stole all the spotlight from Hollywood to anti war protesters in DC. Eager to imitate their favorite artists from the Beatles to Jimi Hendrix, the people flocked to their nearest stores to get in on the bell-bottom action. The bell-bottom craze even led to the creation of a variant called the Elephant Bottom Pants, but just a tiny glance at those has made us question, surely there must be a red line. So whether you're a vintage enthusiast or just looking to add a bit of 1970s flair to your wardrobe, Bell-bottom jeans are a timeless piece that truly captures the spirit of an unforgettable era. Number 24. Leisure Suits Dacron. Polyester and cotton wash and wear suits. Business suits and Dacron and World Tropical. Just mentioning the name in front of someone from the 1970s can make them scream in horror. These polyester suits were a fashion bomb in the mid-1970s, a response to the traditional office attire these suits represented everything that the 70s were going for. Rebellion, flamboyance, and the anything-goes culture of the disco era. Famous for being durable, wrinkle-resistant, and easy to care for, these suits were the choice of fashion for the laid-back, casual men of the 1970s. We all remember the iconic picture of John Travolta rocking his white leisure suit on the set of Saturday Night Fever. But just as quick as they had become a fashion frenzy, leisure suits went out of style as well. With the end of the 1970s and the goodbye to hippie culture, the leisure suit faded into bad fashion history, a non-biodegradable reminder of a swinging decade, but for some naysayers, it was good riddance. Number 23, Corduroy Pants. The 1970s brought with themselves the era of corduroy pants, and people could not have been more thankful. These pants were all about that ribbed texture, comfort and durability. And let me tell you, everyone was obsessed with them. From men to women, kids to adults, everyone was rocking a pair. Known as the poor man's velvet, corduroy pants were an essential part of the working class wardrobe. With a distinctive sound that everyone remembers differently from swoop, 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 to sup sup sup. These pants announced your arrival before you even walked through the door. But hey, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. There was a common belief that these tough skin corduroys were named that way because you needed tough skin to endure the bullying that came with wearing them. Ouch, right? Replaced at the turn of the decade by sleeker styles, the corduroys reigned supreme in the 1970s as the embodiment of comfort and stylish clothing. Number 22. Safari Suits Originally designed for British officers in Africa, these suits made a major comeback in the 1970s, especially after being worn by Roger Moore in his James Bond movies. Safari jackets were famous for their practicality and distinctive look. Promising both sophistication and comfort, even politicians and notable personalities couldn't get their hands off of them, and so the safari suits became a regular part of office attire in places like India. Whether you were exploring the wild jungle or just sitting in your living room, safari suits were the perfect choice of style and fashion. With enough pockets to replace your briefcase and a belted waist that was discontinued later, these iconic rugged suits were a symbol of the 1970s wild and adventurous spirit. So, if you're tired of boring suits that just say, I'm here to work, upgrade to a safari suit and tell the world, I'm here to work, and then maybe catch a gazelle afterwards. Number 21. Madras Jackets Made from the Madras fabric local to the Madras region of India, just looking at these jackets is sure to make your head go woozy. 
the Madras jacket, known for their patchwork designs and vibrant plaid patterns, made a comeback in the 1970s as the hip new trend for those who wanted to show off their true colors. The Madras fabric, known for its lightweight and breathable nature, originated in the hot and humid climate of India, making it ideal for warm weather fashion. The mixture of colors on these jackets screamed, why settle for one color when you can have all of them at once? Despite being a bit tricky to style, they quickly became a hit among college students and were seen at every summer party and barbecue. These jackets ensured that you stood out from the crowd at any event, with or without your intention to do so. Number 20. Disco Jumpsuits the 1970s brought the era of disco and with it disco fashion. From the disco music arose the need to create certain clothes that would cater to the needs of the people for a special place, the dance floor. And so came into being the disco jumpsuits. Jumpsuits had everything you could ask for commonly accompanied by flared legs, wide bell-bottoms, and exaggerated collars, these jumpsuits were nothing short of a Swiss knife in the form of an outfit. These jumpsuits were a sight to behold, featuring skinny fabrics, sequins, vivid colors, and funky psychedelic patterns. It was like wearing a disco ball and announcing to the world, I'm ready to dance. Despite their flashy appearance, disco jumpsuits were designed for dancing. Their stretchy and breathable fabric meant you could dance the night away in true disco fashion. Number 19. Floral Printed Shirts The 1970s were a decade of vibrant colors and self-expression, a combination most suitably found within the vivid and colorful floral printed shirts. Inspired by the nature-loving hippie culture and peace movements, these shirts weren't just clothing, they were a walking, talking bouquet. These shirts were designed with various patterns from small flowers to huge blooms which gave them a psychedelic quality. They came in multiple styles, including button-downs, short-sleeve casual shirts, and long-sleeve dress shirts. Floral shirts quickly became a hipster favorite because nothing says, I'm in touch with nature, like wearing a garden on your chest. Floral printed shirts symbolized the 1970s embrace of individuality and self-expression. Famous musicians and celebrities like the Beatles and Mick Jagger helped bring these shirts into fashion. But as the 1970s turned into the 1980s, the popularity of these shirts also faded away from popular fashion, but their influence has been everlasting. Number 18. Kiana Shirts Kiana shirts were a lesser-known part of the fashion sphere in the 1970s. Made from Kiana, a synthetic silky nylon-like fiber, which was initially intended to be used for high-end fashion, but was later used to make men's silk shirts, Embroidered with their distinct and elegant psychedelic patterns, these shirts made you blend right in on the dance floor. However, they were infamous and being unbreathable and amplifying body odors, yuck! Not the most pleasant, right? The fabric's shiny, smoothie appearance made it an instant hit amongst the disco community, who loved it for its comfort and light weight. These shirts were versatile and could be dressed up with slacks or down with jeans. They often featured wide, pointed collars, which were a hallmark of the 1970s fashion. Perfect for those moments when you want to feel like you are wearing a small glider around your neck. All in all, the Kiana shirt craze was short-lived and they've since fallen into obscurity. Number 17. Satin Pants A part of glam rock outfits, satin pants are one of the strangest fashions we've seen from the 70s. Known for their glossy finish and smooth texture, these pants dominated the disco fashion as the fabric sheen perfectly complemented the glitzy, high-energy atmosphere of disco clubs. Popularized by pop culture legends like David Bowie and Freddie Mercury in their costumes, 
these pants were a must-have if you were planning to groove your way through the dance floor. These pants were often high-waisted, enhancing a silhouette and elongating the legs. With a fabric that was smooth, shiny, and just slippery enough to make sitting down an adventure. Who needs roller skates when your pants can do the sliding for you? Even now, decades after they vanished from the fashion scene, vintage satin pants continue to be sought after by collectors and fashion enthusiasts who appreciate their unique aesthetic. Number 16. Ruffled Shirts In the 70s, ruffled shirts burst onto the scene as a fashion statement, and boy, were they an eyesore. Featured with layers of fabric on the cuffs and neckline that gave them their characteristic ruffled design, these shirts were a reason you should never trust sources that insist anything new is good and the old is bad. The ruffled shirt was great because it added instant texture and personality to any look. Depending on how you wanted to style it, it could go a number of ways, from fun and festive to classic and confident. Ruffled shirts were the life of any party. They bounced, they flounced, and they made sure you were the center of attention. A guaranteed conversation starter designed to bring the good vibes to any event, from your office holiday party to a big fancy dinner. Number 15. Nehru Jackets From being featured in comic books like Archie to becoming a signature piece in John Lennon's wardrobe, Nehru jackets were the talk of the town back in the 1970s. The Nehru jacket maintained the fitted tailoring necessary for mod wear, but gave the conservative jacket a new ethnic flavor. These hip-length tailored coats, with their streamlined silhouettes and mandarin collars, were named after the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharl Nehru, but they were often known by a lesser-known alias as well the Mao jackets. Ironically though, Nehru was never seen wearing the jackets themselves. Its popularity spurred by the growing awareness of foreign cultures. The Nehru jackets saw a meteoric rise in their popularity amongst mainstream fashionistas. And let's talk about their versatility. Need to impress at a dinner party? Nehru jacket. A casual stroll in the park? Nehru jacket. Trying to dominate your local ping-pong tournament? Okay, maybe not. But you'll look fabulous trying. Number 14. Paisley Patterns To anyone from the 1970s, any mention of the Paisley pattern brings to mind bright, psychedelic designs and is associated with other cheesy 1970s icons like shag carpets and bell-bottoms. If a kaleidoscope and a garden had a baby, it would look somewhat like a paisley shirt. Paisley shirts with their characteristic paisley patterns, which were famous for their swirling, intricate designs, were a fashion icon in the mid-1970s. These shirts were a big part of the bohemian aesthetic. The paisley pattern was widely embraced by the hippie and flower child culture, drawing inspiration from Indian and Middle Eastern aesthetics. In fact, the pattern itself originated in Persia and India and gained popularity in the West after the Beatles' famous journey to India. Personalizing these shirts was also common with tie-dye techniques, patches, and embroidery adding individual flair. So, if you too own a Paisley shirt from back in the day, you may want to exercise some restraint unless you want the world to explode from the forces of awesome. Number 13. Punk Outfits In the 1970s, the world of fashion was going through a wave of rebellion and self-expression, the likes of which the world had never seen before. But in the UK, a group of teenagers were waging war on fashion itself. Starting as an anti-fashion trend, punk outfits were a middle finger to the societal norms and traditions that ruled fashion. Leather jacket? Check. Studded belt? Check. Hair that defies gravity and possibly several laws of physics? Double check. Welcome to Punk Fashion 101. Punks challenge societal norms and traditions with their anti-fashion trend, cutting up old clothes from charity and thrift shops, and defying the concept of pristine and beautiful fabric. Embracing a do-it-yourself approach, 
Ripped jeans, torn t-shirts, and patched up clothing were common, often with their own addition of safety pins, studs, and graffiti. Number 12. Military Jackets In the midst of turbulent times and anti-war protests, a jacket found itself in the spotlight of the fashion industry. The M65 military surplus jackets, originally issued to U.S. troops in Vietnam, were brought back to the U.S. by veterans. These tough and durable jackets with their characteristic forced green colors became an anti-war symbol for the left worn by anti-war protesters like John Kerry and John Lennon. Adorned with their ideological patches and badges, these protesters took to the streets to protest the war in proper style and fashion. The M65 quickly became a streetwear icon and also found its way to our television sets from being styled by Stallone and Rambo to De Niro and Taxi Driver. This jacket made sure everyone who wears it looks like a manly soldier without actually enlisting, of course. Number 11. Peacock Revolution The Peacock Revolution of the 1970s was a vibrant fashion movement that saw men's clothing become bold, colorful, and highly expressive. This period marked a departure from the conservative styles of previous decades, embracing a more adventurous approach to menswear. The revolution was characterized by the use of vivid colors, daring patterns, and innovative designs that allowed men to showcase their individuality and creativity. Key elements of the peacock revolution included wide lapels, flared trousers, and platform shoes. Suits and jackets featuring bold prints such as paisley, floral, and geometric patterns, often in striking color combinations like pink, purple and electric blue. Shirts with wide collars, known as kipper ties, became a staple, frequently adorned with eye-catching designs and worn with wide, often vividly patterned ties. The influence of the counterculture movement was evident in the adoption of more relaxed and bohemian styles, including bell-bottom jeans, fringed jackets and ethnic-inspired accessories. The Peacock Revolution also saw a resurgence of vintage and historical influences, with Victorian and Edwardian elements being reinterpreted in contemporary ways. This fashion movement was not just about clothing, but also about breaking societal norms and challenging traditional gender roles. It allowed men to experiment with their appearance and express their personalities more freely, contributing to a broader cultural shift towards self-expression and individuality in the 1970s. Number 10. Touch Guys A 60s leftover, long hair for men still represented a counterculture image. While the establishment might no longer have been shocked by the disheveled hippie style, with its suggestion of poverty and irresponsibility, it didn't quite trust long hairs either. Treat this man with respect, he may have just sold a million records, read the framed poster of a downbeat hippie hanging in the lobby of the Continental Hyatt House Hotel on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. In the United States, the Grateful Dead were the best living monuments to hippie style. Rich European hippies flew to Amsterdam to buy long leather coats, while London's Kensington Market outfitted them with imported Afghan coats, Indian embroidered or printed blouses and gauzy shirts, and unisex velvet loons. Number 9. Radical Denim While denim was a kind of uniform, it could also be manipulated or embellished to make a highly individual statement. Levi's jackets were customized with embroidered stars and stripes and super-studded names and messages. One jacket even had an ashtray built into the sleeve. Traditional blue denim, dyed in indigo, was guaranteed to fade. Fading signified wear and tear and, by implication, hard work. New clothes made from old denim passed as fashion and sold in boutiques at high prices. These included skirts and flared pants made from jeans by opening up part of the original seam and inserting a triangular gusset. Besides blue, new colors and finishes were introduced, mostly inspired by the worn-out look. Brushed denim simulated the velvet feel of an old pair of jeans, 
and colors tended to look drab and washed out. Beige pink, pale blue, and nondescript tan. Stonewashing, which means exactly what it says, putting new jeans into a pebble-filled washing machine, broke down the even color and starchiness of new cloth. Alternately, a new pair of jeans could be worn in a bath of salty water until they felt skin tight. Some dress weight novelty denims were woven with jaunty patterns of teddy bears, flowers, and checks. Denim was even copied in other clothes. In 1972, designer Henry Lear produced leather suits dyed in denim blue that were much more expensive than the real thing. Gradually, a reaction against denim set in, with corduroy becoming a popular alternative for pants and blouse and style jackets. And so, within the language of denim, were clear distinctions, both in terms of how much was spent on any one outfit and in how you wore and treated your jeans. Rich women walked up New York City's stylish Madison Avenue with their well cut jeans neatly pressed, perhaps accessorized by a silk shirt. And famous French label scarf, whereas young students might hang out in New York's Greenwich Village in faded and patched jeans topped with a t shirt or Indian block printed cotton blouse. Number eight, lumberjacks and cowboys are all right. A number of stores began to specialize in Western styles, selling cowboy boots and other items. The fashion for tucking jeans into boots became a part of the 70s look. The often intricate tooling patterns of rawhide belts were just the kind of craft that the hippies of rural communities made and sold to supplement their vegetable growing economy. The tough guy image promoted by lumberjack and cowboy clothes was consciously adopted by some communities on the West Coast. It was popularized in the later 1970s when the village people, a disco squad, dressed up as macho men, cop, Construction worker, biker, and cowboy. Versions of this look have persisted as the corporate image of many sections of society the mustache, plaid lumberjack shirt, blue jeans, field boots, and short, GI styled cropped hair. Number 7. Afro Look. The 1970s was a defining decade for the Afro Look, which became a powerful symbol of black pride and cultural identity. This iconic hairstyle, characterized by its natural, voluminous curls, was more than just a fashion statement. It was a bold declaration of self acceptance and resistance against Eurocentric beauty standards. The Afro look was complemented by equally striking outfits that celebrated African heritage and promoted a sense of unity and empowerment within the black community. Retro outfits from the 1970s. Often featured bold patterns, vibrant colors, and distinctive silhouettes. Dashikis, traditional West African garments, became a popular choice, known for their loose fit, bright patterns, and intricate embroidery. These were often paired with wide legged pants or bell bottoms, which were a staple of the 1970s fashion across various cultural expressions. The bell bottoms flared dramatically from the knee. Provided a dynamic contrast to the fitted tops, creating a balanced and eye catching ensemble. Accessories played a crucial role in completing the Afro look. Large hoop earrings, bangles, and chunky necklaces were popular choices, adding a touch of glamour and personality to the outfits. These accessories were often made from natural materials like wood, bone, and shell, further emphasizing the connection to African heritage. Platform shoes, with their thick soles and towering heels, were another key component, adding height and a sense of drama to the overall look. The Afro look of the 1970s was not just about aesthetics, it was deeply intertwined with the socio political landscape of the time. The Black Power movement encouraged people to embrace their natural beauty and cultural roots. And fashion became a powerful medium for expressing this newfound pride and solidarity. Through their distinctive clothing and hairstyles, individuals could make a statement about their identity and beliefs, contributing to a broader cultural revolution that resonated well beyond the decade. Number six, Caribbean look. 
The Caribbean look of the 1970s was a vibrant, colorful reflection of the region's cultural diversity and laid-back lifestyle. This retro fashion trend was heavily influenced by the island's tropical climate, the legacy of colonialism. The Caribbean style of the 1970s was a celebration of bright colors, lightweight fabrics, and a fusion of traditional and modern elements that conveyed a sense of ease and joy. Men's fashion in the Caribbean during the 1970s often featured loose-fitting shirts made from lightweight, breathable fabrics like cotton and linen. These shirts, known as guyaberas, were typically adorned with intricate embroidery or subtle pin tucks and were worn untucked for maximum comfort. Paired with these shirts were simple, wide-legged trousers or shorts, making the outfits perfect for the warm, humid climate. Bold patterns, such as florals and geometric designs, were also popular, reflecting the region's vibrant environment and cultural heritage. Footwear for both men and women was typically simple yet functional, with sandals and espadrilles being the go-to choices. These shoes were perfect for the sandy beaches and laid-back lifestyle of the Caribbean islands. Accessories often included handmade jewelry crafted from local materials such as shells, beads and wood, adding a unique and personal touch to each outfit. This fashion movement was not just about aesthetics, it was a reflection of the Caribbean spirit, joyful, resilient and deeply connected to nature. The 1970s Caribbean look remains a beloved and influential chapter in the history of fashion, celebrated for its authenticity and timeless appeal. Number 5. Turtlenecks They were the signature item and folks had them in black, white, charcoal, grey, burgundy. You could wear them formally with a blazer or casually with jeans and a jacket, be it leather, denim, bomber or an overcoat. Turtlenecks became a popular choice for men's fashion in the 1970s. These shirts, also known as polo necks or roll necks, had high snug collars that covered the neck. They were both stylish and practical, providing warmth and a sleek look. Men wore turtlenecks in a variety of settings. They could be dressed up or down, making them a versatile wardrobe staple. For a casual look, men paired turtlenecks with jeans or corduroy pants. The stretchy, soft material made them comfortable for everyday wear. In cooler weather, they were often layered under jackets or sweaters. In more formal settings, turtlenecks were a chic alternative to dress shirts. Men wore them under suits or blazers, creating a sophisticated appearance without the need for a tie. The clean lines of a turtleneck added a modern touch to traditional suits. Turtlenecks came in a range of colors and materials. Classic black and white were popular choices, but men also embraced bold colors like red, blue and mustard yellow. Some turtlenecks featured patterns, such as stripes or argyle designs, adding a bit of flair. The fit of the turtleneck was important. Many men opted for a slim, snug fit that accentuated their physique. The collar could be folded down or left up, depending on a personal style. Turtlenecks were a key fashion item for men in the 1970s. They offered a blend of comfort and style, suitable for both casual and formal occasions. This versatile garment remains a classic piece in men's fashion today. We now return to the end of a depressing 1970s sci-fi movie starring a guy in a turtleneck. Number 4. Leather Bomber Jackets There are some die-hard fans of this jacket. Who cares if they're in style? They're timeless and badass. You should wear the hell out of it. Leather jackets are a very bold style typically, and when you add fleece lining, it is even more so. They'll never be common fashion. In our opinion, black leather jackets are better for most people because they hide a bad fit better, and leather jackets are hard to tailor. With a brown one, we think it's easy to look like a cringe boomer if you don't have a great looking model and perfect fit. Leather bomber jackets became a super cool piece of clothing for men in the 1970s. These jackets were originally made for pilots during World War II to keep them warm in their cold planes. By the 70s, they had become a trendy fashion item that almost every guy wanted to wear. 
The leather bomber jacket is made from strong leather, which makes it durable and gives it a rugged look. The jacket is a front zipper and often includes several pockets, making it practical for carrying things like keys or a wallet. One of the key features of these jackets is their snug cuffs and waistbands, usually made from stretchy material, which helps keep the wind out and adds to the jacket's cool style. In the 1970s, wearing a leather bomber jacket was a way for men to show they were tough and stylish. It gave them a bit of a rebellious and adventurous vibe, like they were ready for anything. Popular movies and TV shows from the time often featured heroes wearing these jackets, which made them even more desirable. The leather bomber jacket came in different colors, but classic black and brown were the most popular. Some had fur collars for extra warmth and style. These jackets were usually paired with jeans and boots, creating a rugged, ready-for-action look. The leather bomber jacket in the 1970s was more than just a piece of clothing. It was a symbol of coolness and confidence. Number 3. Sherpa Denim Jackets Denim jackets were very popular in the 1970s and 80s. Suede or corduroy jackets with Sherpa lining were also incredibly popular. We blame Dennis Weaver on McLeod for this trend. They were around, but in many suburban zones in the early 1970s, Sherpa cord jackets or Sherpa sheepskin leather jackets were more common. Contemporaries wore simple, unlined denim jackets. That was more the young rebel image of the time. Sherpa denim jackets became a popular style choice for men in the 1970s. These jackets were made from sturdy blue denim and had a cozy lining made from soft, fluffy material called Sherpa. This lining kept people warm during cooler weather, making the jackets both practical and stylish. Sherpa denim jackets had a rugged, outdoorsy look that many men liked. They were perfect for casual wear and could be paired with almost anything. Men wore them with jeans for a classic double denim look or with other types of pants for a more relaxed style. The jackets often had a button-up front, making them easy to put on and take off. They also featured large pockets, which were useful for carrying small items. The collars of Sherpa denim jackets were usually lined with the same soft Sherpa material, adding extra warmth and a distinctive look. This fluffy collar could be turned up to protect against wind or left down for a more laid-back appearance. Number 2. Three-piece suits Men went again to wearing three-piece suits along with matching vests and also jackets. Shirts were worn underneath, ties had been frequently skipped, while plain-colored suits remained worn, men additionally experimented with bright colors as well as prints. 70s trend had been constantly revisited. That is a decade we keep looking at when we'd like inspiration. It is definitely an era coming from that developments are usually constantly picked, reworked, along with introduced. Vibrant, extravagant, colorful, and also stylish, style in the 1970s was about all these as well as more. Throughout the particularly current past, Several of these tendencies have become a component of our wardrobe, albeit inside a restyled form. Maybe revisiting these styles can give a manner of inspiration. Number 1. Cardigans Cardigans became a cool and popular choice for men's fashion in the 1970s. Imagine a cozy sweater that opens in the front with buttons or a zipper. That's a cardigan. They were perfect for adding an extra layer when it got chilly, but they also looked really stylish. Cardigans in the 1970s came in lots of different styles and colors. Some were plain and simple, perfect for a casual look. Others had bold, bright patterns like stripes or geometric designs, making them stand out. These cardigans were often made from soft, warm materials like wool or acrylic, which made them comfortable to wear. One popular style was the chunky knit cardigan. These were thick and heavy, almost like wearing a cozy blanket. They often had big wooden buttons and deep pockets. Men loved these cardigans for their warmth and the relaxed, laid-back look they gave. Another trendy style was the slim-fit cardigan. These were lighter and more fitted, giving a neat and tidy appearance. 
They were great for layering over shirts and turtlenecks, and they could be dressed up or down. Some men even wore them with ties for a smart yet casual office look. Cardigans also came in various lengths. Some were short and ended at the waist, while others were longer, reaching down to the thighs. The longer cardigans were especially popular for a bohemian or hippie-inspired look. Cardigans in the 1970s were versatile and stylish. Whether you wanted to stay warm, look fashionable, or both, there was a cardigan style that fit the bill. They were a must-have in any man's wardrobe during this groovy decade. These were the 1970s era retro outfits that have faded into history. Comment below if you think we missed something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's a mess. It's a mess. But we'll believe that they're all right.